hi what's up we're in the next part please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings but yes in the last part just a bit of a recap i was speaking about how it is that as christians we need to fill the earth and occupy the planet but there is a strategy by the devil from what it is that i have seen to try and make us focus on nothing but eschatology the end of days and so therefore down tools on whatever war we are making in the lands that we are living in that are making war with christianity i made mention in the last part about the fact that south africa is presently in a cold war it is felt severely however not so automatically seen by the true body of christ and it has been declared on us by reprobate rebellious undignified souls that want to make themselves feel comfortable in their hellbound state by neutralizing true biblical christianity that remains in the country so they are basically trying to kill us off to confirm to themselves that they're going to a heaven they're absolutely not going to and i am out here trying to make it clear that until such time that we get to the great tribulation we cannot be fleeing we cannot be running away we can't be going to mountains in judea we cannot have a, an adrenaline response that says fight flee when we ought fight for our right to exist given that the meek are the ones that are to inherit the earth and delight themselves in abundant peace the world belongs to us ultimately and so we can't be exsanguinated out of it and the lord has awarded us co a confirmation of victory he calls us more than conquerors so we are to make disciples of all nations in so conquering there is no way we're going to win anybody for jesus when we cower when we run away and flee when we evidence to the fallen that are interested in jesus that they might rise that there is no christ coming for them when we cower we do that we make people feel as if though there is nothing in it for us there is always something in it for a person who turns their lives over to jesus christ and the most important thing that's in it for them is the fact that they go to heaven but there is also in it for them the fact that they can get to testify of how god delivered them from a crazy mob of people that imagine that they could actually kick god out of his own earth a, a crazy people that think that they can actually maintain a peace and a democracy in a country that was established by a holy god south africa your whole country was established by jesus christ you cannot kick him out you cannot kick him out in favor of your stupid ancestors if you want to go back to the native random rudimentary thing that you were living prior to christ coming in this country and evangelizing the living daylights out of you go back go back to your spears go back to your mud huts go back to your native lands that were pre-evangelized that's what i'm getting at the lord prospers a land when he walks in it do you understand what i'm saying you cannot imagine that we were set free out of a bad day deep by simply you know pulling out blood out of our fingers and therein lies the blood of jesus uh -uh. we were rescued out of a bad day deep by the prayers of saints that ultimately got an answer from heaven if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and repent and turn from their wicked ways the lord will then heal their land if at all they be beseech him for such a healing as that we were set free out of a birthday by jesus not by international um what do you call this intervention not by mobs or rioting or anything of that nature all those things were providentially ordered by god in order to bring you answered prayer so you cannot therefore disregard the god who set you free and anticipate that now that you are absolutely ignoring him that he's going to keep you in a peace that you acquired through crying to him the moment you drop the ball on god he then is going to basically darken your land for however long it takes for you to be restored to him so those people who are looking at my particular story and case on some garabo look at what you turn into christianity has achieved you've only ever lost everything what's in it for me my thing is i only got so severely persecuted like this as a bible believing christian in this country because the country was already on a slippery slope but downward one and that away from christ and i decided to just be super serious with him and it was apparently wrong turn for me it was the wrong time no i was born opportunely at the exact right moment in order that i might deliver this message i was made super fervent and feverish for jesus precisely because people in my particular era my generation in particular millennials would be disinterested in the one true god and him solidly they would be microwave babies out to trying to get what they want real fast real quick and in a way that they don't have to work for neither patiently wait for and so therefore mix christ with ancestors and the lord had to hook up a couple of voices of reason across these streets in the periphery and i <coughs> i just so happened to be one of them for those reasons i am of course despised because the lord does say that the world would hate disciples but me being despised ought not discourage you guys why because there are so many characters in the scriptures that were 
obviously very anointed and chosen of God that were despised for a season, but ultimately they inherited um, what it is that they were supposed to inherit at all. Look at Joseph. I love the story of Joseph because it's very similar to uh, mine or rather mine is similar to his. And also look at David. He was made to flee from his own land like twice, twice. First before he was king and then once he was king. Before he was king, Saul was all up in his grill. And once he was king, Absalom, his own son. And yet in the end, he conquered. So much so did he conquer that he wrote like a beautiful poem to God at the end of his life just to basically let the lord know that thank you thank you thank you you redeemed me out of literally every last trap that was lain for me and you displayed yourself as god he died a victorious man a victorious man do you understand what i'm saying and a man as well that did not die before what would be the tenement of his time an untimely death he was pursued by death a, a, a myriad of times in the run-up to him actually passing away and he ultimately died a, a natural death he died from natural causes he wasn't killed in battle he was not killed by anyone pursuing him he died a natural death same individual uh another individual sorry who enjoyed a similar outcome was elijah pursued unto death by this a feverish female may the gods deal with me ever so severely if by this time tomorrow elijah is not like one of them speaking about the prophets of baal wanted elijah dead always pursuing him the guy didn't even die he got raptured he didn't even die he got raptured he fulfilled his mission and then was peacefully raptured it is imperative to not allow yourself to imagine that somebody persecuting you into oblivion making it feel as if though there's no other people like you in this world and so therefore there's nothing to live for. It is imperative to, upon gauge, gauging those s ecosystemic factors, to not conclude that it must be the end. You, you can't assume that it's the end because there are so many stories that are of people that proved that it wasn't. I've already given you examples of Bible characters where it looked like the end, but it wasn't. And they kept on fighting. As well as secular examples. I used the Holocaust. Yeah, Hitler. I used Nero's persecution of Christians in Rome. I used the bubonic plague, the black death. I used all of that to help you understand that it's bad now. Yes, we get it, guys. Like, it's terrible. And Jerusalem is fulfilling Bible prophecy, Zechariah 12, like no man's business. It's, become a cup of, it's becoming a cup of trembling, if not already one, right? Bubbling over. All the surrounding nations are trying to heave it away. But, y'all, you need to look at things with the kind of eye that is responsible Look at it with the kind of eye that is responsible. Jerusalem that becomes a heavy, a very heavy stone, burdensome one, is exactly that. But there comes a time when Israel is so isolated and alone that ain't nobody coming through for her. And right now is not that time. That's why it's important to not lean on nothing but the end of days and nothing but the rapture. This whole Iranian nonsense that just happened the other day is indeed telling of Zechariah 12 being fulfilled. But understand, guys that some of the enemies that ultimately beleaguer Israel on all sides, that want nothing to do with it, that want to plunder it, that want to loot it in the Gog and Magog war, stood with Israel. They gave Israel airspace. Jordan gave Israel airspace. Um, who is this? Um, the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, are listed among, or at least it is speculated by some scholars, they're listed among the nations that are going to be um, turning against Israel in the Gog and Magog war, right? Russia, yes, is sending its troops to the border of Syria very well, but Russia has not declared war, not 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 officially against Israel. Russia right now is is playing games because it's trying to distract its attention away from what's going on in the Ukraine. So the whole October 7th attack on Hamas, not Hamas, sorry, the whole Hamasian October 7th attack on Israel was beneficial for Vladimir Putin because it took some of the attention away from what he's doing out there in the Ukraine type establishment thing. So Putin's activity at present is not Gogesque. It's not as Gogesque as the Gog and Magog war suggests that level of, of tyranny against Israel. Plus, Turkey, a member of NATO, even though it's kind of fluffy in that NATO um, status, is, is not intervening or doing anything or standing with Iran at this present moment, especially considering Turkey and Iran are at loggerheads with each other. They don't like each other. Turkey or Russia or both are anticipated to be members of this mutiny this like confederation of nations that are going to come against Israel in the last days with there being nobody coming for them. So those are the countries in the Middle East that have given Israel airspace. As a result of this Iranian attack, the Iranian attack of which was an abysmal failure indeed, because 90% of all of the missiles that, uh, not missiles, the, those drones that went up tops, yeah, nine, nine, and also the missiles, yes, uh, were intercepted by the Iron Dome. A marvel, 
that iron dome we shall admit right so there's quite a lot of prosperity that whole story i am still following it up but i am not scared about it because there are so many things that have yet to occur that would then make me feel like okay now it's time to flee now it's time to flee to the not so much mountains of judea since i'm not a jew but like just i don't know table mountain and just hide in a cave there or whatever it's not yet time for me to be cowering and it's not yet time for me to be thinking forget about your husband forget about your children forget about your future you 40 year old geezer you forget about all that carabo because look at what's going on in the middle east if i say forget about all that i will stop chipping away at the stones that are encircling me in my little prison do you understand what i'm saying I will stop trying to fight to get out of this. I will do less work on YouTube. I will do less in order that I might just sit around waiting for God to come and rescue me, deliver me out of this somehow supernaturally through something like a rapture. I have been getting bombarded by dreams this past 24 hours of the devil just basically kind of rehashing the book of Revelation. He's scared. He must be very afraid of what I'm doing right now. Lo satani. He must be because he is trying very hard to make me basically focus all my energies on eschatology i absolutely love eschatology and studying the things of the end but i want to be realistic and i cannot rely on nothing but the rapture and this is based on studying scripture enough to be able to gauge what would be your response right now i already spoke about the pre-tribulation rapture in the previous part and how it is that it is the best viewpoint of the rapture that enables believers to appropriately respond to the world persecuting them around them. The pre-trib rapture helps Christians remain bold before the rapture. However, after the rapture, they know they must flee. They know they must flee. Otherwise, you're inevitably going to get conquered just based on the fact that it's just biblical to do so. Okay? Um, therefore, the activity going on in the Middle East right now, while it is telling of Bible prophecy, it's there's, there's, not, yet, there's not so much compelling fulfillment of bible prophecy happening with all these things that are going on that i would feel and like you know basically like it's time to chill like down tools not only um does israel have a lot of support right in the middle east with being them being given airspace by their surrounding countries egypt also uh refused to give iran any kind of help you get my point all the surrounding nations are not gathered against israel there is a temporary global consensus that Iran was irresponsible in so doing what they did. And I say temporary because they always turn on Israel. Look at what they have been doing ever since the, the um, Rafah um, strategy by the IDF. Now America has gone all like weird and like a little fishy flapping outside of the ocean acting strange on Israel. But it has not entirely extracted its support of Israel. And that is something that has got to be present in the Gog and Magog war. Not only that, uh, the United Kingdom has also come in to aid the war effort of Israel against Iran. There's just too much support for Israel. That's what I'm getting at. There's too much support for Israel right now for us to conclude that we are definitely going home tomorrow. However, things are ramping up very speedily. They're happening very fast in increasing measure. It's like the birth pains are ridiculous right now. So obviously we are at the end of days, but gauging just how close to the end we are, we ought use discretion, Bible prophecy, the Middle East and our own lives to figure that out. We know that we have got to make war with our own beleaguering armies. When Israel is making war with beleaguering armies and is also being assisted, it is when no help is coming, guys. It is when Israel or Jerusalem is Stoxielalian with nobody coming for her that God intervenes in a very personal way, in a very supernatural way with that earthquake in Gog and Magog. We get intervened on behalf of when we are being, bele when we are being beleaguered on all sides with nobody coming for us. That's when the Lord then goes whoop, vacuums us into the sky. Because literally nobody wants to help a Christian. No one wants to pull in a favor for a Christian. No one wants to help a Christian daughter out. No one wants to help a Christian son out. No one is trying to have our backs. Our courts are constantly making decisions against us, against their own law. Disregarding the rule of law, we are not there. We are not at a point where Christian persecution is so severe that we're not getting heard. Like we are basically just cellophane walking around. You can walk right by me and see right through me and never know I'm there. They call me cellophane. Like that dude in Chicago. We are not cellophane yet. We are not. And so far as we, we, we sound an alarm, a siren, a voice, we are getting heard by some people. So what I'm trying to explain to you guys is that 
when you have some kind of a semblance of a crack an opening of light coming through a dark room that is evidence of the fact that you gotta keep fighting only when it's completely dark should you break out sorry should you wait for god to come and intervene if everybody is unfettered and unmoved by your persecution that's when it's over i know it's not over for me because people at all subscribe to my channel daily i know it's not over for me because people at all watch even my long form content albeit it being four or five or seven people i know it's not over for me because every so often my family members do better than what it is that they sometimes do there are people who throw spells barrage of attacks coming from outside targeting my family to mistreat me they will then mistreat me for four days following which they will feel so terrible that they will stop and then award me with mercy they will award me with grace it's been like that on a loop for years that means that people are still in a position to be contrite to be broken and to award an olive branch grace to a christian that it is possible indeed as a christian to live at peace with those who are around you if you are living in a persecuting environment and you can still foster peace with your persecutors it can't be the end yet because in the end people sons and daughters hand their own moms and dads to be killed that's how bad it is in the tribulation nobody takes prisoners there there's no but it's my mom so i will hide her in a basement like anne frank it's just reporting 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 and people being prepared to lose to death loved ones that level of global demonic possession so if you can still say hi bye and smile and laugh and eat a full healthy meal with the person that is making your life a living nightmare you are not yet at the very end of the very end of the very end if there is some kind of ability to live at peace with your enemies you must still strive to get your life back together again you must still strive in every situation that i have been in i know how to be content i know how to be brought low and how to abound you must know that godliness with contentment brings great gain and so far as you have a bed to sleep on at night and a hot water bottle that's warming your thighs even though it's getting cool now uh, and so far as you've got food in your belly and so far as you have got basically some kind of security of your daily existence whether or not you are where you want to be whether or not you're in your apartment whether or not you've got your husband yet whether or not you've got your kids your dog and your cat and your parrot whether or not you have basically exactly what you ask for in prayer from god yours is to recognize that you should know how to be brought low and how to abound and so far as you have your bread paul says this god give me just enough don't give me more lest i should forget about you be pompous and arrogant but also don't give me so little that i would steal give me just enough and when you have just enough which i do recognize that in that season that's god preserving you for whatever he will have you walk into ultimately he did it with joseph if you think about joseph in egypt he was preserved and root going to where he was going he was fed in egypt he had a bed to sleep on in egypt he had shelter he had uh, basically the minimum amount of stuff that he needed to stay alive long enough to recognize what god was doing with his incarceration in egypt ultimately upon basically taking it one day at a time he found himself being the prime minister of egypt so if you're eating if you've got a bed and if you have got people that can live at peace with you joseph Fa uh, potiphar lived at peace with him until the pot potiphar's wife accused him of, of of rape or of attempted rape he was lived with peace at so much at peace with potiphar that potiphar made him head of the head of his household and then when he was in prison he was able to live at peace so much within that system that they made him like head prisoner or something to take care of the affairs even basically bordering on being a warden and then of course he ended up in pharaoh's household so that's a person that was in not the position that he wanted to be exactly in life he wasn't exactly living in the mansion he dreamed about when he was 17. he was in a lowlier position than th that which he expected to be in for his kind of caliber of human being very well however despite that he had just enough to get to where he had to be in front of a cupbearer and a baker interpret their dreams and then later on a cupbearer would go on right ahead and tell pharaoh about him and boom the dude is interpreting pharaoh's dreams and next thing he is the prime minister of egypt having hooked up a whole agriculture irrigation project to feed the world for seven years of famine that was the story of joseph and there are many others in the scriptures of that nature loneliness for a season do not mistake it or miscalculate it for the end it is sometimes just enough for you 
to transition to the next place and if you were ornate and shiny in your transition to that place you might have gotten too much attention on yourself perhaps you were put in a lowly position to have not enough eyes on you or not many eyes on you precisely because you had to be groomed and fashioned and rewarded with wisdom in a lowly position such that when you do finally stand before governors and kings your wisdom will be shocking to them because you will have acquired it in so much lowliness with nobody listening to you but there might have been never mind a conceitedness on your part if you had all these crowds around you all along but there also might have been an endangerment of your life if at all enough people saw you if at all your rise your your risen state your shiny stardom was observed by some you might have actually died being killed because covetousness is a murderer do you understand what i'm saying prior to your getting to your destination do not look at your lowliness as nothingness look at it as preparation and so therefore yours in that preparation is to work fill the earth and occupy it do not merely look out for the rapture but the devil the devil has been trying to make me look out for nothing but that i already made a determination not to about two years ago when i sat around with bated breath outside of many of these ministries on youtube that mean well that are out here talking about the feast of trumpets and all that jazz and uh, guys it, got, it just got so taxing and so discouraging that i made a decision to rather just look at everything else and it has given me a nice balance and has made me continue to pick away at my wall in this shoshank prison that i am in i am picking at the wall and look lo and behold uh two years from the moment i first started picking after returning back to youtube having started my account about 10 years ago like only just two months ago after two years of suffering and being just dead quiet going nowhere i have finally started to see some kind of light from me chipping away into a wall i've seen the outside i've gained hundreds of subscribers across all of my channels in just the past two months alone and it will continue to ramp up daily i gain subscribers where before i would sometimes have a net negative of a gain of subscribers i already made mention of that over a month over a month and yet here it is that i am daily making net positive gains on youtube i'm growing and i will continue to grow and eat grow even if even if my watch hours are still very meager it doesn't matter because even with the fact the fact that i'm growing at all in subscriber numbers has in, caused me to invest now basically grab another hammer to pick at the at the window at not the window sorry at the wall yeah uh, it's given me another hammer to perhaps invest a little bit more in my long form content i'm doing shorts to lead people to my long form content and i'm also adding thumbnails now i recently started adding thumbnails and that's only going to continue to ramp up why because i have seen a sliver of light on the outside but satan satan has been trying to make me focus on the book of revelation like proper i had a dream where i was being bombarded lambasted with utterances about it's the end the book of revelation obviously the reason why these people are afflicting you like this is because it's the very end and who are these people afflicting you the exact same miscreants that keep on afflicting me my cousin who has been busy with me like no man's business and my ex-boyfriend dreamt about my ex hooking up another gorobella spell trying to get back into my life i'm like dude but why are you so naive right and then my cousin as well also just going back to the drain porch pulling a stunt they heap abuse on you because you walked away from a life of debauchery they're scared but they're not scared they are telling themselves that there is safety in numbers south africa is a witchcraft state is that basic and you're not going anywhere i also had a dream um uh, or a vision i don't know what it was i was in the middle of like worlds basically about to wake up okay of me just being thrown a whole bunch of rands in my grill shortly after me basically saying that you who are trying to block me from making money in south africa you're naive because i could actually be making dollars pounds or euros why are you coming at me and then i get a dream mocking that basically showing me all that you have to look forward to are rands rands and cents from this here south africa of yours and i'm like you know what all these attacks showered me with so much persecution to a point where today i almost never worked out because i was just so exasperated but i was like you know what i am pushing because i've even noticed that one of my pants is slightly looser than it was at first so i'm losing the weight i've been wanting to lose i am making traction in just about every goal i have set every endeavor i have set apart to reach i have prospered to gain traction any kind of semblance of movement in it over the past month so i am motivated to keep pushing because i'm seeing progress motivated to keep working out because i've seen that i've lost a little bit of weight motivated to keep uploading because i've seen that my youtube channel keeps uh, channels keep on growing motivated to keep on pushing because my family members repent after they act a fool for a season there is hope for me there is hope for me to restore what i'm trying to get at myself 
no not myself god will be the one to do the restoration do you understand but some kind of a semblance of a normal life again it is entirely possible because there are slivers of it here and there even though they come with one little heartbeat boom 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 and then i have to go back right again to the defibr defibrillator G clipper, and bring it back to life again everything that i try to bring back to life again tries to flatline on me again but i am constantly working to the nail through all throughout the clock to bring it back to life I cannot give up. Whether or not my ex-boyfriend feels entitled to me like Jadena in the music video Bambi is irrelevant because I'm still going to go marry another man anyway. Whether or not my cousin wants to hold me hostage in this, I'm still going to go and get my life anyway. And I know that that's a thing. Why? Because there are signs of life everywhere even if I have to keep on defibrillating them every single day. One day that heartbeat is going to stay. One day that pulse is going to stay. I won't have to keep on doing CPR on it every single day. The day's going to come when I'm leisurely now. I'm able to upload a video once every two, three days. Maybe even once a week. The day's going to arrive when I won't have to upload 10,000 shorts in one sitting just to gain 10 subscribers. The day's going to come when I'm finally able to chill, relax. Basically live like normal people. But for now, I will keep on basically prophesying over the valley of dry bones. Because I have seen that some people are waking up. I have seen it. I have absolutely seen it. The other day, the Lord gave me a um, a word of knowledge telling me that my, my little sister is going to get born again. She has been some, one of the most recalcitrant people I've ever dealt with this entire time. When I heard that, I was like, what? I would never imagine that she would be the first one to turn to you. If anything, out of my whole family, I mean, goodness, who is the most likely to turn to? Probably my mom. That's who I would imagine would probably give her life over to God first. That one, last, 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 last resort. And I got a word of knowledge that she is going to turn to Jesus. I don't even know based on what, how, who calls her, how she responds to the Christ that she rejected in her older sister. But I was like, okay, let's wait and see how that happens. Let's wait and see how under heaven that happens. So with the Lord telling me things like these, I apologize. I'm not about to go and look forward to nothing but the book of Revelation. I'm too studious, guys. I'm too smart. And I'm also too observant of what's going on. But then again, it's the devil that's trying to deceive me like this. But his servants are working to the nail to also cause me to down tools and give up. Why would I give up when I've got some kind of semblance of hope? And again, to the servants of the devil, like my cousin and like my ex-boyfriend, I had yet again dreams about both of them dying. I keep getting dreams and um, for me it's like, really guys, it, doesn't, it, 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 it seriously doesn't have to end like this. It doesn't have to end like this. When you stand in front of Jesus, stand in the way of the gospel, you will be moved out. You will be moved out. Whatever God is doing through me, if he's not going to end up rapturing the body of Christ in my lifetime or in early enough of my lifetime for me to be rescued out of this through it, he will move everybody out the way that is standing in front of whatever God is doing through my particular life. So, I mean, really and truly, Luke 13, yet again, shall I reverberate on the rooftops, reiterate it, repent or perish. Repent or perish. Like, stop going back to the drawing board. We understand South Africa is a witchcraft state. We understand a lot of people have embraced it. But if enough people are ultimately going to wake up and recognize that Christ is the pearl of great price. Heaven is the pearl of great price. That even when there is little incentive on the earth to embrace him, he is worth it because he is our country. Heaven is our country. And when then that country, you become a patriot of it, you will fight even when you're feeble. You will fight even when you're feeble. So even if your country persecutes you for turning to Christ, even if you get rejected, even if you get disregarded, spat on, made to live on the dregs of society, outliers, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, to live is Christ, but to die is gain. A lot of Christians are about, are going to enter heaven exhausted and exasperated and feeling like, oh, my life was so hard because they did not want to keep on picking at a wall to break out of the persecution of the lands around them because they were increasing in hostility given that we're in the last days. They will have held on to Christ, but with so much difficulty. But then there will be those who are victorious, more than conquerors, breaking into heaven like they're the flash or something. That's what's good. Like Superman entering heaven like that because they fought evil structures in their lands. Given that they made an observation that it's not yet the tribulation, so I'm not about to cower. I'm not about to cower. This here South Africa belongs to Christians. Our national anthem is Christian. You don't get to kick us out, ancestral worshippers. Because frankly, this ancestral worship of yours is also among black people, which is only one demographic in an entire country. So you are going to be fought by everybody else. I already made mention of the fact that if you don't repent black people, civil war is literally coming to you. 
because you've made yourself so severely entitled to all different kinds of acquisitions at the expense of everybody else all over the show because you have become bewitchers of all of south africa your ancestral worship has made you bewitch south africa into oblivion it has made you hold on to power in presidency when you are no longer fit for purpose to run the country is that basic you have become very irresponsible look at how you've thrown away our nation look at our power cuts Look at the crisis. Look at the fact that I don't even upload my content anymore during South African hours because I'm actively trying to avoid you because you keep on bewitching complete strangers online. That's what's happening with South Africa. Black people, you are responsible for shaking the country in a horrible, horrible way. You have created so much division that essentially now the new apartheid is you. You have caused the new black supremacy in this country. You have been now the ones to oppress an entire nation into oblivion. Because you're holding on to so much darkness that nobody else can breathe. It's created silos, divisions, and it's made people kind of avoid you. Avoid you. But hey, we are being run by black people as a country at all. Like our government is black. So there's no running from that. So you have a whole bunch of people whispering in corners their true sentiment. Not however coming out with the truth of how it is that they feel lest they should be called racist or whatever. And that's how it is that you hope that you're going to be one day able somehow to restore a country that's obviously falling apart because the people who are running it worship the devil. The people who are running the country are mixing Jesus Christ, their Lord, with ancestors, anticipating that God is not going to tell them, depart from me, work of iniquity, I never knew you. You have ruined the country because you're unrighteous, you're unholy. And in so doing, I've created, like I said, a great deal of division. It's every man for himself now. And everybody else that thinks that they can end their complacency protect themselves from what would be the tenement of the black mob they're naive because south africa is a black country and so if you ignore black people you ignore the country you live in you need to repent if you don't want to do you but my ex-boyfriend dude you are responsible for gender-based violence all of this coercion trying to be with a woman that doesn't want to be with you gender-based violence and as for my cousin you are responsible for toppling the south african economy because why under heaven did you pull from underneath my feet my degree and my career you have stolen a skilled resource from out of the South African economy. You are responsible for unemployment, therefore, and the crackling apart of our economy generally. You and many others, because of course we can add a multiplier to you, right? That's what's good. There's like millions of you. Millions. Way more than we are frankly able to take in our stride. All of the sabotage that you have caused witches of South Africa, it's not just black people, but they are largely coming from the black community because of ancestral worship. It is literally synonymous to witchcraft i don't even think they are mutually exclusive ancestral worship and witchcraft they are the same thing the exact same thing you have caused so much destruction so much destruction on such a national scale that absent of your repentance your whole nation is going to be squandered i already prophesied this the other day that god showed me that if south africa doesn't repent you're going to end up like haiti haiti is a voodoo state and it is also a failed state there are cannibals in the streets the level of education is abysmal the iq of children is low because they are not, they're not being raised in a thriving environment to actually prosper, thrive entire civilized nations. They live like Neanderthals in Haiti, largely. I don't even know how they still have any roads. And that all crept into the land, thanks to witchcraft, thanks to the adoration of idols. It's like they eroded away at themselves so badly by bewitching each other that the country is no longer habitable. There's constantly missionaries going in and out of there trying to evangelize them. Some of them get killed. It's just a dangerous territory and God compared South Africa's future to that of Haiti. In other words, just this place where there's like a whole bunch of gangs running the streets. Incontinent men who feel entitled to running a country that has no more resources left. No more humanitarian aid uh, works to actually recover anything. It'll get stolen. You are putting yourselves in a position to be run by mobs, gangs of occult practitioners, high priests and high priestesses. People who work for the devil so all they can do is steal, kill, and destroy. While Christ has come to give us life and life abundantly. So granted that all that they can do is steal, kill, and destroy. They will obviously steal, kill, so little by little, and destroy the country. You have ruined your own land. It is why I gotta go. And it is in me wanting to go that is also causing you to be very pos possessive of me. To a point of bewitching me into oblivion and making me feel like I have no other choice or option. But to take one of you as a husband. But to let any one of you. Just grab me because you found me early on in my journey in growing on YouTube to imagine that you can quickly just exploit the circumstance of a very greatly gifted woman that's an all round a beautiful girl, but that nobody likes. So just kind of run away with her like Pink Panther, a bandit. I apologize. I'm waiting on God for what it is that he will do for me. All of y'all right now are the equivalent tantamount of Potiphar's wife, frankly. 
out here trying to seduce a dude that doesn't want you and then you accuse her or him in the case of joseph of rape so now you've thrown me into prison you are seducing a woman that doesn't want you so now she's in prison well i mean i'm in the right place right to meet a cabera a baker that will ultimately introduce me to some nation's president is that basic it's only a matter of time i am going to soar i will fly and until such time that the trumpet blasts and we get caught up in the sky i will be chipping away at a wall brick by brick soil by soil letter by letter that is ultimately going to break me out of this particular prison i am not giving up it's the end but it's not the end it's the end but it's not the end it is the end of the world because the signs are all over but it's not the end because i haven't been raptured have i i'm signing out in christ's name crank k peace hope you've been edified